Hello, class. It is right after the SpaceX launch is supposed to have taken off on uh, whatever date this is. Who knows? I don't know. Um, and the bad luck is, if you're looking at the screen, <laughs> the bad luck is what I did was I wanted to get in a lecture prior to the half hour before the SpaceX crew took off to the space uh, station. And so I did all this, but I forgot to hit the record button. That's right. I did this whole lecture, cracking jokes and everything all the time. And uh, I forgot to hit the record button. And because I was, you know, thinking about the SpaceX launch and everything, I guess I, 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 I never really, it never registered to me until the very end of the lecture, which was 35 minutes that I did not turn the recorder on until the lecture was over. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to, uh, since I, you know, I can turn this uh, failure into a success by using another 35 minutes of my time, which I'm probably just gonna sit around watching TV during anyway, so, uh, or going outside or doing something like that. So I guess I'm gonna do the lecture all over again. And I, uh, I'm going to start, of course, from the top. So uh, the beginning of the lecture, what I did was I wrote this stuff down at the top. So this stuff was already written down anyway. All of what's above the red sort of uh, squiggly line there, right? And I wrote that down because uh, this was from the last lecture that we did. And the last lecture that we did was a lecture on twin lead. And um, the twin lead that we looked at there had A equal to one millimeter, right? A was equal to one millimeter in that last lecture that we did. And we got a couple of things. We, we figured out what the geometry of it was. Uh, this was two millimeter diameter, uh, two millimeter diameter wire. And then we also figured out that the propagation constant was 3.6 times 10 to the minus three neppers per meter plus J 10.44 radians per meter, right? That's what we found out. So we've already done that in the last lecture. I just have down here that the characteristic impedance of twin lead, whether we're, whether we're looking at twin lead with this configuration or the twin lead we're gonna look at in just a second with, uh, uh, the radius being half a millimeter rather than one millimeter, right? Half rather than one, um, is uh, uh, is obviously going to have something different here. But um, let's look at this. So this is three point six times ten to the minus three neppers per meter. And when I look at that, when I use the conversion factor up here that I have, one nepper equals minus 8.686 decibels. When I use that conversion factor and multiply it by uh, 0.0036, it gives me 0 0.031, that should be a minus, minus 0 0.031 decibels per meter or minus 31 decibels per kilometer, okay? Attenuation. Uh, and if you remember our coaxial, when I was talking about the coaxial cable, the coaxial cable um, that you use behind your TV set had more like uh, 48 decibels, minus 48 decibels per kilometer, remember? You'd also notice that the um, cable that we looked at, the coaxial cable, had 16 radians per meter, whereas this twin lead is only 10.44 uh, radians per meter. So you might say to yourself, hey, you know, really everything here is better. You know, this is really better than a coaxial cable, but you've got to remember there's no shielding around this. There's no shielding around this at all. So any outside interference, like a, a plane flying over, because <laughs> uh, I remember, you know, we used this as when I was a kid. Uh, that, that's just, that, that changed everything. So that's the problem with this. You just got so much interference that you go to a coaxial cable 
because that coaxial cable has a Faraday cage as part of its geometry, and it's just going to not have any outside interference because any outside electronic interference that hits a coaxial cable is immediately um, accompanied to ground by the ground shield around the coaxial cable signal wire, right? I know, I use a lot of terminology, but uh, learn, learn how to speak engineer. Now, that's what I wanna do. And of course, I didn't wanna just speak all the time I wanted to write, but unfortunately I can't. So now I'm doing another example here. And this example is where A is gonna be 0.5 millimeters. And, and what I wanna do again is uh, just write down here, uh, everybody can see this up here, right? This distance right here is 2A. And then this distance that goes from the center of this over to the center of that is 2D, all right? So everybody knows the geometry that we've been looking at, and I'm sure you do because we've been talking about twin leads for quite a while now. Uh, twin lead, of course, can extend into transmission lines as well. And I, I don't know if I've got the time to go in and specifically look at transmission lines. Right now I'm looking at uh, communication lines. I think those are a little more interesting and important, but we can extend this to 60 Hertz transmission lines as well. Uh, of course, they're exactly the same as, as what you've got here and they are kept at a certain distance apart from one another in between transmission towers, aren't they? And they're kept apart because the actual waveform is traveling through the air in between the wires. That's why you don't want to parachute into a uh, transmission line. Uh, yeah, we could go into so much with that right now, <laughs> I'm sure. However, let's get back to this. So, so what I, I wanted to, to do is first, when we look at the difference between this and this, we've got A is 0.5 millimeters here. So if I go over here, I see that 2A, two times 0.5 millimeters is just going to give me one millimeter, isn't it? And then the distance between these now is going to be 6.13 millimeters, whereas this was 12.26 millimeters, which was a little further apart than the uh, spacing is on a 300 ohm uh, twin lead wire. Usually it's about a centimeter a little bit less than a centimeter. So you can see that, that really we don't put two millimeters in here and we don't put one millimeter uh, in here. We put something that's a little more than one millimeter, not quite as high as two millimeters. And so that way, uh, and that's the effective, the effective diameter. Okay, now, cause we use stranded wire, right? We don't use solid wire like we use in a coaxial cable here we use stranded wire. As anybody knows that's uh, cut their TV tuner antenna uh, for their tuner on their stereo, right? Okay. Now, um, anyway, let's get back to this. So that's G equals zero. And then I've got, uh, oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to uh, point this out because the only thing that changes here, the uh, L doesn't change, right? There's nothing in there that has anything to do with A. So it's just the ratio of D to A. So L doesn't change. That's still one times 10 to the minus one micro Henry per meter. C doesn't change, 11.12 picofarads per meter, just like it didn't when we were talking about the three different configurations of the coax. L prime didn't change and C prime didn't change, right? G prime is always zero. And then R sub S is the same for 500 megahertz, right? That's what we're dealing with here, 500 megahertz. The twin lead here, the twin lead here, 500 megahertz. The two coaxial cables that we looked at with different uh, 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 geometries, I mean the same geometry, but uh, one was larger than the other one, uh, all 500 megahertz. So if a 500 megahertz, that's what we've got here, right? So 5.6 times 10 to the minus three ohms 
And then r prime over here is just r sub s divided by pi times a. A in this case is 0.5 millimeters, remember, not one millimeter. You know, I also want to point out because these are going to be half the diameter that they, that here, that they were up here, half the radius, well, isn't it pi r squared is the cross sectional area? So isn't the weight and the amount of copper that we use in this configuration going to be one quarter? the amount of copper that we use here? One quarter, isn't it? We've cut the radius in half. One half squared is one quarter. One quarter the material if we do it this way. But we lose something too because this, instead of being 1.79 is now 3.57, isn't it? Because I use 0.5 here rather than one millimeter, I use 0.5 millimeter and that gave me 3.57. Now. Here's what I want to do as far as uh, gamma goes, right? Now, gamma is equal to R plus J omega L times G plus J omega C, all taken to the square root, right? All taken to the square root. Well, what if G is zero, right? What if G equals zero? So if G is zero, then I would have J omega L prime times J omega C prime, right? Well, J squared is just minus one. And omega times omega is omega squared. And C prime times L prime is C prime times L prime, right? So I've got that right there, plus, now we still have J omega C and we still have R, don't we? So R is now multiplied by J omega C. So that gives us plus J omega R C. So this is an equation right here. This is an equation if G equals zero, but R does not equal zero, right? R does not equal zero. Now, before we go on to solve this problem, what I want to do is I want to come down here and I want to look at something else that I talked about because it goes along with G equals zero moles per meter. What if R prime equals zero ohms per meter and G prime equals zero moles per meter, right? What if that's the case? And we call this the lossless line approximation. I know a lot of you are probably saying, hey, I think he already covered this and told us what it would be. And if you look at that, we then get rid of the second uh, co uh, component, the second uh, multiplicand. Or no, no, that wouldn't be multiplicand, would it? Anyway, the second component over here, the imaginary component of this uh, complex number. So down here, we lose that and we end up getting J squared omega squared L prime times C prime. Well, if we take those out, J squared to the square root is just J. Omega squared to the square root is just omega. And then the square root of L prime times C prime, right? Now, if you look at this, L prime and times C prime taken to the square root, well, that equals a real number, doesn't it? And omega equals a real number. And then I've got J out in front of it. So J times this. Well, don't we know the propagation coefficient equals the attenuation coefficient plus J times the phase shift coefficient? And isn't that a J? Does everyone see that? So there's a J in front of that and there's a J in front of beta. Where's the real part? There is no real part. There is no real part. So in the lossless line approximation, alpha equals zero neppers per meter. Well, that's not realistic, is it? That's not really realistic. Uh, so that's why I'm teaching you how to actually figure out what alpha is and, and everything else. Now, let's get back to this uh, example where A equals 0.5 millimeters. 
Now, if we use that equation that we just got up here, or, or minus omega squared L prime C prime plus J omega RC, and those should have primes on them uh, too, of course. Um, I then go down and fill in, uh, oh, wait, I'm supposed to crack jokes here. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> so I go and fill this in uh, with this thing. So omega squared, we know that 500 megahertz times two pi, isn't that what it is? Omega equals two pi f. So uh, is 3.14 times 10 to the nine radians per second squared, right? Minus in front of it times one time uh, one micro Henry per meter times 11.12 picofarads per meter uh, plus J and then we've got Omega R prime C prime Omega is again 3.14 times 10 to the 9 radians per second uh, R prime is 3.57 ohms per meter and C prime is 11 picofarads per meter right so we've got all those multiplied. Uh, uh, and then I'm just putting this around to show that I'm going to take the square root of that whole thing. And when I do take the square root of this, I find that it is a complex number like this first, minus 105.96 plus J.1233. And you're probably thinking, why aren't you putting uh, you know, units on that? Don't, don't worry about it. We know what the units are when we get out the other end. Uh, they're really, um, uh, inside here, they're one over meters squared. And once we get outside here, they're, they're one over meters, right? Because they're taking the square root. So that's what we've got. We, we end up getting, when we work all of this out, I get minus 105.96 plus J.1233. And if I turn that into a phasor, I get the square root of 105.96. Looks very close to that at an angle of 179.933. We wanna, we wanna make sure that we use that angle and we use the, uh, that really as much uh, significant digits as we can so that when we take the square root of that, really just cutting the angle in half, then what we're gonna end up getting is we're gonna end up getting 89.9666 degrees and 10.294 uh, per meters. If I, if I then break that down into its two components, right, my attenuation coefficient and my uh, phase shift coefficient, as you can see, the phase shift coefficient is very close. And, and didn't we see that exact same thing when we were comparing the different size coaxial cables that we saw that the radians per meter for the, the larger one was the same as the radians per meter of the smaller one. This doesn't really change here, but what does change? This changes, this changes. Because if you look up here, it was 0 0.0036, wasn't it? 3.6 times 10 to the minus three. So 0 0.0036, 0 0.0036, nobody can see that. Anyway, um, down here, I end up getting um, 0 0.006, so almost twice as large. And that, that, of course, shows up here, too, when I multiply it by 8.686 decibels, minus 8.686 decibels, right? Um, I end up getting minus 52 decibels per kilometer plus 10,291 uh, radians per kilometer. But this is what I'm really looking at here, right? So that's the uh, important thing. Um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to teach you to tell you the Edison story and the Einstein bank robber story. But, you know, now, uh, since I didn't really record this, um, I am going to probably pass on that and just keep this to the things that we've done. And I will have to teach those to you next time. Remind me the Edison story and the Einstein bank robber story and the Einstein Podolsky Rosen theory. Okay. Those are the three. All right. Um, 
let's see. Uh, I also did write the Lorentz transformation down at the bottom, and that's what I was going to talk to you about with the Einstein uh, bank robber story. Uh, but I'll do it on the next one. I just wanted to get this lecture out of the way because this is the second time I've done it, right? Okay. I'll see you guys later.